Hello. In this week's Scan It Saturday, I decided to compile a few of the requests that I've had through and try and show you one way of creating, um, oh, what are they called? Stepper cards. That's it. So um, without precise measurement positioning within the Scan and Cut Canvas, it's not the easiest thing to do, but I'm going to try and show you some tips to, to really sort of go for it and, and get uh, a really nice effect, and maybe even a few variations at the end of the video as well. So let's get cracking. Now, obviously, the first thing you need to do is log into Scan and Cut Canvas. I've shown you that before, so we won't cover that in this video. Next thing we're going to need to do is get some basic shapes on screen again, as we normally do. This time I'm going for a rectangle. I'm also going to drag on a thin rectangle and a square. Now, uh, I'm also going to find myself a very simple uh, scallopy shape. Now, I don't always use all the shapes that I drag on, as some of you have noticed in my previous videos. So don't feel that you have to at this time. You can always access this panel at any time and drag on any particular shape that you would like to. I'm just going to hide that for now, though. So I, again, I've got maximum view on the workspace. With the main rectangle selected, I'm going to open the properties panel, move it to one side. I'm going to deselect maintain aspect ratio. I'm going to type in some measurements. I'm going to go for five and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. This is going to give me a folded card of five and a half wide by four and a quarter tall. And just so you can get a better orientation, I'm going to, oops, going to rotate that by clicking on the rotate button, holding down my shift key on the keyboard and rotating it. You can, of course, type in the exact um, rotation that you want. I'm also going to deselect the line color and give it a fill color. This is one I'm working on the screen. It makes no difference to the cutting out. It just helps me understand what bit is which when I'm uh, working with this. So that's the main card base done. I'm going to select it and press the D key to duplicate it. And I'm going to bring back the line color and take away the fill color. And then I'm going to double click it so that I access the line editing mode. I'm going to click on open closed outline. Then I'm going to click on delete uh, point. And I'll select, uh, sorry, this point at the top of the long stalk and delete that as well. So I'm left with this single line. Clicking on my select key again or using the shortcut key V. Then I'm clicking and dragging to select both of these shapes. And I'm going to use the alignment tools to position that line centrally on that rectangle. And then to finish this section, just click G on your keyboard and that will group them together. I'll come back to those in a while. What I need to do now is sort of start creating the stepper area. So I'm going to bring on this square. Again, I'm going to type in some measurements this time around. Three and a half inches uh, tall by four and a quarter. Uh, and again, I'm going to rotate that. I'm going to bring that in the middle here. Now I'm going to start zooming in so that we can see a bit better what's going on on the screen. Maybe a little bit more. OK, so with that uh, rectangle selected, I'm deselecting the line and I am adding a fill color. Now, you can't see it because I've obviously done something to this other shape, which has made that come forward. So so that we can see it, go into my edit menu and choose uh, bring to front because I've got the rectangle selected. Now I'm going to click and drag to select both of those and align them on the bottom edge and also centrally vertically. Right, so I think that's our starting done very well. Uh, with this long rectangle, I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to type in some measurements again here. This one's going to be one inch wide by one inch wide. I'm going to bring that down to the bottom. Again, I'm going to remove the line. And the reason that I'm removing the line, by the way, is because 
with um, Scanning Cut Canvas, it uses the line as an alignment tool as well. So when I'm aligning it to an edge, it sometimes misaligns it. So you just have to be careful on that one. Now I'm deselecting that square, and what I'm going to do is select the two rectangles, click G to group those. Now, as you can see, it's kind of shoved it in front of everything. So again, I'll go in and send it to the back. And now I can hold down the Shift key and select this extra square and align it to the left hand side and to the bottom edge. So now when I zoom in, you can see these two edges meet perfectly. Whereas if I add that line back in, you can see that that line extends beyond that shape. So it's always important to maybe not mix those, just make sure that you've got things there. With the view menu, we can zoom all sorts of different ways. I'm fitting to all content, and that includes anything that's off the mat. Right, now I need to duplicate this, so I'll highlight it and press D on my keyboard. I'm going to move that up there. And I need a second one, and I'm going to move him down here. Now these two need to be aligned to the edge of the um, card. So I'll select them all and click left. I'm then going to zoom in as close as I can get to where these two squares meet. Select the top one and using the arrow keys on my keyboard, nudge it down until they meet. And then zooming back out and zooming into where this square meets that horizontal line that we made. Selecting the square and nudging it until it's roughly halfway over that line. So if that's where my line is, let's say there. Okay. So I think we've got Excuse me, I think we've got everything in place that we need now. So what I need to do is make some adjustments to some of these shapes. Um, first, what I'm going to do, though, is duplicate, uh, sorry, group these three together first and then duplicate them. Move them over to one side. Select everything that's here and group it. And then bring these over and forward. And then select all of this together again, and then we're going to align to the bottom, and this time to the right. Okay. So now I'm going to go back through and ungroup everything that I've grouped before. So I need to be able to work with all these shapes individually now. Okay, I think that's about it. Right. Okay, here we go. Now... First thing that I need to do is get some other lines going on. So I'm going to zoom from here to here. And I need to get a line from there to that point there. So I'm using this uh, line tool here. I'm going to start my line just here. I'm going to hold down the shift key so that it goes just perfectly vertically. And then I'm going to click there. Now I've got my line. Uh, oh, I'll double click to take that off, but I need to um, go into line editing mode and open that shape and delete that point. I should have double clicked down here. That was my mistake. Right, now properties, and we'll add a line color to this back. We'll take off the fill. Uh, and we are leaving it as a cutting line. So we'll leave that one as it is. We'll duplicate that and we'll move that one over just to here so that it's overlapping those two bits. Okay, I think we're about right there. This one though, oops. I'll just nudge down a bit more. Maybe that one. Right. Okay, 
So we're going to start changing these uh, shapes into various different things. So the first thing that I'm going to need to do is go into line editing mode on this shape, open it, and I want to remove all of the lines except this top line. So this is fine. I've highlighted that one. We'll delete there. And I will highlight that one and delete there. And again in my properties for that line, I am going to add back the colour for the line and take away the fill colour. And we're going to change it to a dashed line. That's because it's going to be a score line. Now, this line that we had across the middle of the um, shape, you might need to ungroup that again if you didn't quite get there. We're going to delete because we don't need that now. And then we're going to do what we did with this square with these two and also the three up the other side. So this time around, I might actually uh, change the line color and the fill color before I even get started. Okay, so I've got the side bits done. Now I need to do this main square. Again, I need to bring back the line color and get rid of the fill color and go into line editing. I'm going to open that shape and then I'm going to delete the two sides and the oops and the bottom line so that I'm left with just the top line. And again, that's going to become a score line. Right, so if I zoom out a little bit so you can see what's going on, that's now our stepper card. It's a centre stepper and it will have two thin side panels. So when you make that or when you come to cut it, it will be just fine. And just to finish off, for no reason at all, I'm just going to put those back to where they were. Now what you would do is select everything that's there and press G on your keyboard to group them so that if you want to resize this stepper card and make mini ones or giant ones, everything is going to be in the right position exactly and it's going to resize it proportionately. So that's one way of doing it. And obviously, don't forget to give it a name. Oops, got the caps lock on. And then save it to your projects uh, for future use. Now, I did get asked a while ago, what if you wanted to put sort of a fancy top on it? Well, that's possible. Uh, one way of doing it is to bring in a shape. Bring in a shape. Align it with this edge here. And then I'll zoom in to show you the next bit. What I'm going to do is try and slice this shape and then open it. I might just drop it down in size a bit more if I can. Now 
Now, because we know this fold line is the middle, we can use our alignment tools to um, position it exactly in the center. Uh, now, I'm going to need a square from my basic shapes. I'm going to resize it. Then I'm going to position it so that the edge runs across the middle of that scalloped shape. Then I'll press shift and click on that shape and use my process overlap. And fingers crossed this will work. Perfect. So it's given me just half of that shape now. Going into line editing mode, and I'm clicking that bottom right hand uh, node, and then I want to click open. Now it's not used the particular node that I wanted, so I'll undo that. I'll go back into line editing mode, and this time I'll choose the bottom left, and we'll choose open. There we go, that's done what I wanted it this time. So that's basically given me a half shape with an open base. What I now need to do is um, ungroup all of this stuff so that I can access this dashed line. I might zoom in a bit closer so I can get right in there. There we go. And I am going to duplicate it. Move the duplicated one so it's pretty much exactly over the center of the other. And then decrease that size until it fits in between the shape edge there and that cut edge there. Then I'll select the other one, the first one and decrease that in size until it goes over the other side. And now, if I zoom, what will happen is this will cut, this will sit up on top of the card, and you will still have all of your mounting fold action going on. Now, if you'd have wanted to have created panels for this, you would probably have needed to, to have done it before uh, we got started with all the chopping in that business. But we can potentially save ourselves now by dragging some stuff on and positioning it. Well, I tell you what, actually, if I group this first, so select it all and then group, I should be able to use my alignment tools again to get that right where I need it, perfect. And then with, uh, let's say this rectangle, click, shift and twist to the point where we think we've got it. Um, let's say there, and let's position that centrally over there. Then if we select those, oops, no. send that to the back, select the two shapes that are going to form our little central layer, and we'll use the process overlap to weld those together. And then we can also, if we wanted to, create other mats and layers to fit on top by using inwards on our create offset line, like so. So that's one way of creating uh, stepper cards with fancy tops. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, please obviously do pop them in the bottom of the um, video on YouTube or in the comments section on the blog. And hopefully I'll see you again next week for another Scan It Saturday. For more hints, tips and tutorials, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or visit me on any of these social networking sites.